During an infection, T helper cells are responsible for choosing the appropriate immune weapons to fight the invading parasite. For example, T helper cells differentiate into Th1 cells to fight viral infections, and they differentiate into Th2 cells to fight worm infections. While this is straightforward at the scale of single individual T helper cells, it's more puzzling at the scale of a group of T helper cells. Sometimes T helper groups adopt a variety of mixed types, including Th1, Th2, and many hybrids between the two. Other times, T helper groups polarize entirely toward Th1 or Th2. In my PhD work, I investigated whether quorum sensing could explain when and how these polarized groups emerge. Quorum sensing is the change in behavior of a group of cells as cell density changes, and it's driven by molecular signals produced by the cells. In the case of T helper cells, these secreted signals are called cytokines. To detect quorum sensing experimentally, I aimed to culture T helper cells under a variety of different cell densities and with different types of cytokine signaling permitted to hopefully observe different patterns of differentiation. To do this, I extracted T helper cells from a transgenic mouse with yellow fluorescent interferon gamma to visualize Th1 differentiation. I then added these cells to different chambers of a cover slip, which contained different combinations of blocking antibodies to permit different types of cytokine signaling among the cells, both Th1 and Th2, one or the other, or neither. Inside each chamber were grids of 4,000 microwells each, so that cells would randomly assort into replicated groups of different sizes, anywhere from one to 30 cells. Once cells were settled in their microwells, I stimulated them to survive and differentiate towards Th1, and I imaged them every two hours for two days to measure positioning, viability, and interferon gamma expression. This generated a lot of data. I've outlined the microwells in blue in a representative image, and inside each one you can see white circles, which represent the T helper cells, and black circles, which are their stimulation beams. For each microwell, I also assembled a time-lapse video of the entire two-day experiment. In each still frame of a video like this, I measured cellular clustering, viability, and interferon gamma expression. Having assembled thousands of time courses of these variables, I used Bayesian multi-level modeling to ask how they drove Th1 differentiation. Paying special attention to the interaction between cytokine signaling and cell density, since this should be most indicative of quorum sensing. In fact, I fit a family of models to account for changing impacts of each predictor through time. In the end, no model earned a majority of model weight, and so I averaged each of the models together. The results were quite complex, but also compelling. Here I'm presenting the results in which the average distance between cells in a microwell is used as the proxy for cell density. The interaction between cytokine signaling and cell density that I had hoped to see was non-existent, which at first glance seems to argue against quorum sensing. However, cytokine signaling did not even impact Th1 differentiation alone, suggesting that experimental control of cytokine signaling must have failed altogether. <laughs> what is more, there was a strong signature of cell density on Th1 differentiation. The more clustered cells were, that is, the smaller the distances among them, the more strongly they differentiated towards Th1 phase. This deeper look suggests that some manner of collective coordination among T helper cells is in fact going on, and it certainly warrants further investigation. If T helper cells rely on collective action to coordinate immune responses, then effective immune therapies and interventions ought to be designed accordingly to not only provide particular stimulations, but to also modulate the ways in which T helper cells talk to one another. <laughs>